If we're interested in how the fluid velocity changes, then we need to track the changes in X momentum with time. That's an acceleration. And it looks like this, di u di t plus u di u di x plus v di u di y plus w di u di z, or in two dimensions, di u di t plus u di u di x plus v di u di y. Now where does that come from? If we look at an Eulerian control volume, then we want it to balance the momentum change inside the control volume. So if U4 on the top here is greater than U3 on the bottom, then more X momentum goes out the top than came in the bottom. And it was carried in through the bottom and out through the top by the Y component of velocity even though it was X momentum that we were talking about. It's the Y component that carries material across the boundary down here at the bottom and across the boundary up here at the top. So Y velocity takes it through those surfaces. If U2, the velocity here, is greater than U1, then more X momentum goes out this side then came in on this side. And if there are no forces applied in the X direction, and delta X is equal to delta Y because the control volume is square, then the change in the momentum inside the volume is going to be proportional to the difference between what goes out the top, what comes in the bottom, what goes out this side, and what came in that side. So let's do the U direction faces first, this one and this one. What came in this side? Well it was the U velocity times delta T, that's how far the flow went this way, minus the U velocity times delta T, that's the amount of stuff going out that side, times the velocity that it came in with or went out with, this is the momentum that that flow carried with it. So comes in with U1 momentum there, goes out with U2 momentum there. Likewise, for flow going in this direction, the V velocity carries some stuff in the bottom with U3 momentum, carries some stuff out the top with U4 momentum. Divide through by delta T and take into account the volume here and the surface areas here and you wind up with delta U over delta T plus U times U2 minus U1 over delta X plus V times U4 minus U3 over delta Y equal to zero if there are no X forces applied because there can't be any net change in the in the momentum. So we wind up with di U di T plus U di U di X plus V di U di Y equal to zero. Or in three dimensions, we just pick up this W di U di Z term. Again, for no applied forces in the X direction.